when you hear the word DAP, you usually just assume Ethereum DAP, and most of them kind of have this same kind of stack, which is that you have the blockchain and all the code is and data is residing in the blockchain, and then you have this thin client DAP layer, which is just a bunch of interface code really that interacts with the blockchain through uh, MetaMask or whatever, right? Like through the Web3. Um, in our case, it's a little bit different, right? Like we're more like a BitTorrent peer. So, uh, so the logic that drives OpenBazaar does not reside in a blockchain. We really only use blockchain for the payment mechanism in the escrow uh, scenario. And so for us, our tech stack looks more like uh, we use uh, libp2p at the networking layer, which allows us to do peer-to-peer -peer networking. And, and every, compu you know, every device connects to the OpenBazaar network independently. And, and then on top of that, IPFS, which is like the data storage layer, which talks on top of libp2p. So this allows us to store data into the network. So we're not storing it in a blockchain, we're storing it in a peer-to-peer -peer network and it gets distributed across all those peers. So Wait, like you're not a I, blockchain? What are you even doing on this podcast? <laughs> I know, I'm sorry, we're, we're not a blockchain. We'll leave now. Um, <laughs> yeah, but no, I mean, the whole idea behind this is like we early on, you know, when we were building Open Bazaar, we we're like, okay, how do we do Bitcoin scripting or like how do we use op returns and all this stuff? I remember very early on we went into the Bitcoin devs or, or Bitcoin wizards IRC chat and we were some one of our guys was asking uh, questions about how we could store data in the blockchain on Bitcoin blockchain. And I think it was like Greg Maxwell was like, you guys are fucking idiots. You got to get out of here. Like and wanted to boot us out of the IRC chat. And it was like, you're going to spam the blockchain. And that was just like, we went down a really dark path there for a little bit. Um, so, so very early on, we realized like, okay, data is not going in the blockchain. How do we get around that? And uh, IPFS was like a perfect marriage of, of solving that problem. So we keep all of the non payment uh, data out of that into the IPFS network, which is great. Uh, so we have, you know, that's the data layer. And then, you know, then we have the application code, which is a desktop app in its current form. Uh, but, you know, we reuse that logic and, and code uh, within our upcoming mobile app. And we're hoping to port that to the web as well. And all that is open. And that is what, you know, allows you to understand, like, how do I create a listing? How do I buy it? How do I dispute it? You know, all these different things. And then obviously there's the wallet component, which is kind of to the side. And that's where we have the multi-wallet that can do many different coins and payments. And you pull that in for your transactions as needed. So that's where the blockchain fits in. So that's why I say we're not really like a Bitcoin project, so to speak. We're more of a free trade project that happens to use crypto to enable that.